next. All right, it is that time again. It is time to talk about new makeup releases. What are we buying? What are we not buying? What are we hating? What are we throwing shade at? What are we loving? All of those things that we talk about in these videos. If that sounds interesting to you, make sure you stick around. Before we get started, let's go ahead and do the YouTube things. If you enjoy the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell, share it to the Twitter, to the gram, to the book, all of those good things. If you can hear a lot of noise in this video in the background, I have a new kitten that lives in this room at the moment and he is playing with his little balls with bells and all that kind of stuff and I'm just letting him live his best life. So just be mindful of that. <laughs> now, uh, let's just go ahead and get started and talk about the new makeup releases. I'm gonna sit a little bit to the side like I always do so that I can put the photos of the products that I'm talking about here. ColourPop, because it's not a new makeup release video if we aren't talking about ColourPop, my good friends. ColourPop actually released, now they've obviously, I think they've had a few releases since then, but I actually paid no attention to this ColourPop release whatsoever because I actually thought it was their, um, like just looking at the picture, I thought it was their recent quad eyeshadow palettes that they just recently launched, but it was actually a um, face palette. So this is like blush and highlighter palettes. I do like the fact that they have catered to deeper skin tones with this release. It's taken them long enough, but credit where credit is due, they definitely have at least catered to the darker skin tones with these face palettes. So hats off to them. I just honestly thought these were eyeshadow cords, so I didn't even think twice. Is this something I would pick up maybe one day if I did another ColourPop order? But honestly, I've really gone off ColourPop. Does anyone else feel that way? Like I completely understand that they're affordable, but even then their prices from when I first started doing makeup to now has increased so dramatically. And I don't personally think their quality or their packaging has increased. Well, okay. Okay, actually, no, that's a lie. Their packaging is really, really nice, but I just don't think that their quality has increased that much to warrant the, the price increases that they've been doing, but maybe that's just me. But yeah, I don't know. I've just kind of gone off ColourPop. There's too many releases. There's too many same, same makeup releases. It just feels like they're throwing shit at the wall and hoping people are going to buy it at this point, And that annoys me. Fenty Beauty also released their new uh, Bright Fix Eye Brightener. So it's an under eye brightener that easily hydrates, brightens and conceals. Delivers a fast, natural, no makeup makeup effect with sheer to buildable coverage. Creased humidity and sweat resistant long wear formula. Um, it has a really nice shade range. I can see what they're trying to achieve with this and I think a lot of people probably like it. I actually haven't even watched any reviews on this particular product since they have released it because I have not had any luck with Fenty Beauty like foundation or concealer products really. Their bronzers, their, oh I haven't tried their brushes but blushes sorry, but basically everything but their foundations and concealers I adore. But every time I've tried a foundation from then, it has been horrific on my skin. Like, I'm I'm talking horrific and saying the concealer's always been too drying. So, I'm not even... It's also just not really a product that I naturally, like... I don't really do the whole no makeup makeup thing very often. I'm like, if I'm going to wear makeup, I'm going to wear makeup. Not that I'm like a full, full, full glam coverage queen either. I'm like somewhere in the middle. But I just don't really see any point of doing no makeup makeup. I'm just, com I'm just like, I'll just wear no makeup. That's fine. Do you if that's you? No shade, no hate. It's just not for me. Anyway, so I wouldn't normally gravitate towards this kind of a product, but um, yeah, I just I haven't had any luck with the Fenty kind of like foundation concealery type products, so I just I'm a bit wary. I'm a bit wary of it, you know. Oh, actually, KVD Beauty. They've been releasing some pretty interesting products. I've been impressed with them a little bit more, actually. Um, and they are releasing... I'm not sure if it's out yet. I, we still don't even have the Good Apple Foundation from KVD in Australia. I don't know if it's because it got so popular from TikTok so quick that they had no stock to send us or if it's not coming or what. But yeah, it's, it's a bit hit or miss what, what releases we get from KVD. But they're releasing the liquid cream blushes and bronzers. And uh, it says others. I'm guessing others is highlighters. Um, and they look really nice. Like the colors look really nice. Yeah, uh, it says it's a lightweight, long wear liquid gel blush for a modern dewy jelly skin glow, building it up without moving your foundation or highlighting texture. So, uh, it says 26 US dollars. That should be... Oh, Ralph. 26 uh, US dollars, so about 30 something Australian, I think that will work out to be. So yeah, I'm keen. I'm interested to see how they go. So they don't come out till May 28th. So hopefully we get them in Australia. That would be very exciting. Oh yeah, this one. Okay. I 
have slightly mixed feelings about this release. This is the uh, Christian Louboutin, so Louboutin Beauty. They're releasing what looks like blush and highlighter palettes and eyeshadow palettes. And obviously one of the most famous Christian Louboutin shoes is his studded leather shoes. So I get the vibe of this packaging. Um, I don't mind the black studs. I think it's not really my personal taste. It, it used to be like probably five years ago. It's just not mine anymore, which is totally okay. Um, but I don't like the red and which is, I find a bit disappointing because if I was going to get anything, those eyeshadow palettes, I'd, I'd need to see it in person, I think, but those eyeshadow palettes look so basic and boring to me. And I know like going off the cost of their lip products and their eyeliners, this is going to be so, so expensive, like probably even more so than Pat McGrath, which we all know that the quality of this is not going to be worth like Pat McGrath costs or higher. I don't know. The, I'd need to see the eyeshadow palettes in person, which I wouldn't be able to because in Australia, we wouldn't, that wouldn't go to any store or anything like that. But they just look boring. The face palettes are probably the only thing that I would potentially consider, but I hate the red leather packaging or I don't know if it's leather, but I hate the red packaging. So I'm not sure. I'd have to see the cost of this because I feel like the face palette as well would be like $200 and I'm like, I'll leave it. Thanks. I'll leave it. So yeah. I don't know, let me know your thoughts. Are you going to pick it up or not? This one I'm excited about, but it has been delayed. I had it in my calendar to pick up and then it's been delayed, which I'm not kind of mad about. I can save some more money, you know. Um, but Lisa Eldridge is releasing an elevated glow highlighter. So a glow slash skincare hybrid with blurring, tightening, and moisturizing properties. Um, and then also an enlivening blush. So a light cream serum formula, easy to apply, blend, and build. Um, and it aims to blur, lift, and tighten the skin. I mean, I think I've said this before, but if you have blurring and lifting in your product description, I guarantee you, I will buy it. I know that it's probably not the case, but I will buy it. Um, so I'm going to pick up both of these products when she does release them. It's been delayed because one of the products coming in, I think, to the UK has been delayed. So which I appreciate that she's so honest. Instead of doing a pre-order on us all having to wait you know, potentially weeks and weeks for us to get the product shipped to us. At least she's being really honest about it. But yeah, I will be picking them up. I'm there. I'm there. I'll be getting them. Oh, okay. Huda Beauty. This cracked me up so hard. So hard. I'm not even kidding. I was like, first I was terrified. First I was afraid. Then I, I don't even know the words. What I'm trying to say is this palette cracked me up. So this is the Huda Beauty Glow Obsessions Highlighter Palettes. Highlighter palettes, sure, fine, dandy, whatever. Nothing innovative there. I'm sure she's reformulated probably her highlighter products. Great. I actually even was almost tempted to try it, but I just don't... I like... I like that she's gone in shade ranges. That makes me very happy because I think it's like she's showing that she's trying to be inclusive. You know, 2021, great. Let's move on up in the world with shade range inclusivity. Um... But even then, like the lightest one, like there's that bronzy shade in there that is just not going to suit my skin tone. And it's just another face palette that I would be purchasing where I can't use all of the shades. And I'm sure other skin tones feel exactly the same way with face palettes that even, even if it's suited towards like, say, deep dark skin or whatever, it always seems to be a shade that you just can't quite use. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so for that, I just don't really love face palettes anymore because I want to be able to use all of my products instead of just leaving one pan. And you say you'll use it as an eyeshadow. You say you will, but how many times have you? Mm? Anyway, what had me cracking up, well, actually, what had me absolutely terrified at first and then had me cracking up was the packaging of this. Like, who da? Huda, girl, Huda, I like you. I like your products, actually, especially now that you're stopping putting fragrance in them. Fantastic, fantastic. Love your new lipsticks, love your new lip liners, love, love. But the packaging, your face, the way that they've done this packaging on this palette is absolutely terrifying. Like, you're scaring children with this packaging my girl like and also i saw on Teresa is dead one of her subscribers commented and was like it's like a dictator no it was sorry brit clark's life one of her subscribers was in the chat being like this looks like a dictator like portrait and it, i can't unsee it i can't unsee it and it is so true this literally looks like a dictator portrait like mm. Like, normally her packaging's pretty good. Like, it's, I don't know why she feels the need to always put herself on the cover of her products. Like, that's fine, whatever. But she's got beautiful eyes. So, like, on her eyeshadow palettes, it's all cool and stuff. 
this I'm just like who who okay that that's terrifying it doesn't need to be like that anyway let's move on did you guys see that Zara is relaunching their beauty brand which I think is kind of cool because the first kind was a bit like yeah no one really cares about a lip kit anymore like Kylie Cosmetics we've been there done that this time they're releasing it um, and it is going to be so it's a collaboration with legendary makeup artist Diane Kendall I actually love Diane Kendall and the way that she does makeup so when I did read that I was actually very excited it's also um, clean formulas cruelty free and refillable so it's like eco chic um, which I also really appreciate like I really respect the fact that these brands that are coming out now are producing clean formulas eco-friendly products like that kind of a thing I think it's a lot more conscientious which is nice I'm not sure if that's the word but that's what we're going for um, I will say about this so they're releasing like a whole line pretty much it looks like so they've got lipsticks um, jelly oils lip glosses they've got some eyeshadow palettes some eyeshadow duos some loose pigments eyeliners bronzers blushes highlighters face palettes brushes and nail polishes um, and it says prices range from $7.90 US to $25.90 US and then they have the refills and oh it's launching on May 12th so it's probably already available I wonder if it's available in the Australian one I'll have to check it out anyway I look look I probably will honestly pick up a couple of these products if it is released in Australia eventually because of the fact that Diane Kendall had such like she collaborated with this and I just adore her as a makeup artist so from that fact alone I probably will pick up some of these products do they look anything revolutionary no no they don't but I will try it because it's Diane Kendall and I love Diane Kendall so yeah I just don't like the stark white packaging it's just not my vibe it just looks a bit plain and cheap to be completely honest with you it just looks really cheap to me the packaging i think if the packaging was a little a, like a bit nicer i'd be like yes i'm trying and i'm in, i'm here for it but because the packaging is so boring i'm not that keen but i will give it a go okay this one m cosmetics has released actually have they released it already may 16 tomorrow in australian time so um by the time this video is up these are released but they are releasing new moonbeam cushion highlighters I am so excited for these. I definitely want to pick one up. I might not pick one up straight away on launch day just because of, you know, money. But um, I will pick these one up, uh, like one of these up at some point. I actually want to try like a full face or what, like, you know, as many, much of a full face as they have available of M Cosmetics. I've kind of filled my cart up and know like my budget for it and stuff. It's just having the money. I just need to wait till I have the money to try them. But I really want to do like a, like a video testing M Cosmetics because they look really, really beautiful. And I love my, one of my favorite foundations, which is discontinued was the Wet n Wild Cushion Foundation. I don't know what it was about that foundation. I freaking loved it. I loved it. I love a cushion foundation. So I definitely want to get the M Cosmetics Cushion Foundation and this cushion highlighter. I'm all into it. I don't know, I think it's just the novelty of a cushion and putting my beauty blender in there. I'm just there. It's just for me. This one. This one I went on a little bit of a roller coaster ride with, and um, we've now come to the end of that ride, but it was a ride for a second. So the Natasha Denona Zendo palette. Yeah. Um when I first saw this, I was like. When I first saw that she was releasing a new eyeshadow palette, I was very excited because I have been looking to add a new Natasha Denona palette to my collection to kind of, because I've got Leela, I've got Glam, don't love Leela, super, super love Glam. So I wanted to add another one to my collection so that I could really put to the test of like, if I do like her formula or not. So immediately when I saw this, I was let down because whenever there is a red shade, if I have to be honest in an eyeshadow palette, I get super disappointed because I'm never really going to use a red shade. It's just, I don't get drawn to that. And same with there's a couple of golds and browns in here that I just am like, I'm not super drawn to those tones. But the top right hand corner with like the blues and the aquas and the greens, I was like, oh, okay, that's really stunning. Like actually, if she sold those four shades in a quad, I would purchase that 100%. Like, that is a quad that I would get. Um, but the rest of the palette, I was just like, I kind of already have all of these shades. Then I was like, no, no, no. Everyone, I saw everyone online was getting so hyped and excited for it that I was like, no, 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 Martina, get into it. Like, yes, you could get this palette. Like, get it, get it. And then I went onto her website to, like, pre-order it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, get it, get it, get it. And then it was, like, 40 US dollars shipping to get this palette to Australia. So the palette is 65 US, and then it was 40 US shipping and I was like okay I definitely don't like this palette enough for that like that's a whole other palette almost 
So I left it and then I started seeing everyone's reviews of this palette and honestly I couldn't even finish watching the videos because the palette to me, like seeing it on like in, like in the videos, not in person but in the videos, I was just like, this palette is too boring. It's just too boring. It's not for me. I'm not saying that it is or isn't boring. Like I think the colour scheme is kind of pretty but like it just does not inspire me. I don't look at this palette, I don't watch the reviews and get inspired. Like with Club Nebula, I would see people use it on Instagram and just be like, I am so into this palette, I'm so inspired, I really, really need it. So I purchased it. But when I watch the reviews and see looks created from this Zendo palette, I'm like, next, next. Oh, oh my gosh, this was so exciting. So Nima Tang has collabed with Dose of Colors for two kind of lip sets. And I was really excited to see this. I love Nima and her videos. She is such a sweetheart. So it was amazing to see her have a collaboration. I actually really like the tones of both of these lips. I wouldn't, I'm not, I'm not going to purchase this just because I don't, I have too many lip products as it is. And it's just not really two colors that I personally would ever wear. But I think this is beautiful. I think for the like deep and deep dark skin tones as well, this just looks absolutely spectacular, like actually stunning. And she looks so beautiful in the photos. I'm really, really pumped for her. I think Nima's so underrated. She's just amazing. So massive congratulations to her. And I think like if you're into those lip colors, get them because I mean, I've had Dose of Colors lip products before and they are really, really good as well. Oh my God, this one. <laughs> My God, Mac Cross Cruella. Look, lip products, fine, great. Pencils, brushes, great. Cool, packaging, okay, fine. Then you get to this eyeshadow palette. I wanna know what, who the fuck, what the fuck anyone was thinking. Like, why, 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 why? That's what I wanna know. I wanna know why, because this doesn't inspire me in any way, shape, or form, and it just frustrates me that they've got like one, two, well, let me count in evens, two, four, six, eight shades in here for probably quite a large pan. It irritates me, the layout of this eyeshadow palette, the pan sizes irritate me, the color scheme irritates me, the whole thing really irritates me. I don't like it at all. I'm sorry, Mac, I just don't. I just think you could have done so much better with that and this is what, this is, this is what we got. Like, oh, disappointing. The rest of the collection is fine, it's Mac, it's fine, whatever, but just that eyeshadow palette, I was like, are you actually effing serious that that's what you're producing? Like, I'll be interested to see if, Anyone buys it, to be honest. Um, Colourpop also, man, Colourpop releases some collections, don't they? They never slow down. They don't sleep at Colourpop. They're releasing the Barbie collection or Malibu Barbie collection. I actually think this is cute, especially if you have a little girl that is super into Barbie. If I had a little girl that was into Barbie, I would totally buy her this. Like, it's adorable. Um, the only thing I personally would pick up in this collection is the lipsticks because I think they're really cute. Um, and the lip, I think it's lip liners, isn't it? Yeah. And the lip liners, the eyeshadow palette probably, it's I, I like it's actually pretty, don't get me wrong. I think the eyeshadow palette is very perfect for Barbie, very cute. It's just I already have these colours in my collection, so it would just be like repeat purchasing for me. So I'm not going to purchase it, but I can. I think it's cute. I think the body, I think it's a body highlighter. Oh, it's a face powder. It's a face powder, right. Okay, well, I might look into the face powder a little bit more because that looks intriguing to me. The lipsticks look super cute. The packaging super cute, like... A plus for all the packaging and everything like that. But yeah, it's probably a little bit too girly for me. Like I wouldn't, it's one of those things with Colourpop again that if like I was purchasing something from Colourpop because I saw it and was like, I have to have that, then I might like add say like the Barbie lipsticks and um, what was the other thing I was talking about before that I was like, oh maybe, oh the, the blush face palette thingy. You know, I would just add them to my cart while I was there, but I wouldn't like go out of my way to get them. You know what I'm saying? Let's talk about Jouer. I like Jouer. Jouer. I sounded so Australian then. I like Jouer Cosmetics a lot. Like I really do. I really love their concealer. I really love their foundation. Granted that's the only two products I've tried for them, but I really like them. And back in the day they were, I don't know, they were the brand for lips. You know, everyone talked about Jouer. I, I like them. <sighs> and then they released this summer collection. So this is the French Riviera Matte and Shimmer Eyeshadow Palette. And I just want to know who I need to talk to at Jouer because this ain't it. This ain't it. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like maybe I'm just a really, really harsh critic. I don't know. I don't like the packaging whatsoever. I, and I actually think it's the packaging that throws me off this palette the most because when I look at the swatches of this eyeshadow palette, again, not something that I'm like, hells yes, I'm running out to purchase this, but the swatches make it look way prettier 
than the actual palette itself. I don't know, the packaging of this eyeshadow palette looks really cheap to me. It, just me? Just, just me? Like, let me know. I don't know. I just, I'm not into it. It's not my vibe. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's, it would be like a nice natural, if you're, again, if you're someone that's a very natural makeup wearer, you probably would actually get a lot of use out of this eyeshadow palette, because it seems like it'd be like a soft wash and kiss of colour, you know what I'm saying? But yeah, and then they've also got like two of the blush sticks that they've released, which look cool. Like, I actually like the look of them, but... I did see a review, I think, from Mel Thompson or someone where she said, like, they're actually, like, they really wanted them to be good, but they weren't, um, which is disappointing. And then I think it's, like, a lip balm, balm or gloss or something. But, yeah, it's just not interesting enough for me to go out and spend that level of money on it. But it's disappointing because I really like Jouer. Oh, my God. I actually cannot even talk about the Urban Decay Cross Prince collection. Now, I'm not a massive Prince fan, you guys. Well, not that I'm not a massive fan, it's just he's, it wasn't, it's just never someone that I've really listened to, to be completely honest with you. So I don't know a lot about him and what his vibe would be, but I don't feel like this is it. I don't feel like if he was to create a makeup collection, that this is what he would create just from like seeing the music that he's released and like the videos and just what he was about and I'm not a massive fan so I'd be interested to know if you're a massive Prince fan what you think he would think of this I know I've seen a lot of people say that Prince would never have done this kind of a thing in the first place like at all because he was like a perfectionist and he didn't really like putting himself out there in that kind of a way so it's a little bit disappointing to kind of see that his estate's just gone ahead and kind of like I mean it could be his estate or it could be like the music label I don't know anyway let me know though if you put that aside and you think about his personal taste. Do you think that he would be stoked with this? Because I feel like he wouldn't. Because this is the most boring fucking basic. I can't. Am I wrong? I'd. Am I wrong? Like it's okay. Maybe I'm just again. It, it, when I instantly saw this, I actually thought Luna Beauty life's a life's a drag palette instantly. Um. I don't know. I don't know. It looks so utterly uninspiring. And I feel like when you think of Prince, he was so inspirational. So inspirational. And then you get this. It just, it like, it doesn't feel okay. But let me know what you think. Just let me know what you think. I can't even be bothered going through the rest of that collection because it's just so uninspiring, honestly. All right, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts down below. I'm sure I've asked a million questions of you guys, so if you can remember, remember them all to put them down below, go for it. But yeah, let me just let me know your thoughts overall down below. Um, I'm sure by the time I've put this video up, a million other makeup releases have come out, but I wanted to just throw my hat in the ring, you know, my opinion hat in the ring for those releases because I felt some kind of way about some of them. Anyway. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Uh, it means the absolute world to me, especially if you are watching until this point. Just thank you so much for taking the time out of your day and watching my video. I hope you have an amazing day wherever you are in the world and I will see you next time. Bye.